<laughs> Let me tell you a little bit about Bet Online. It remains your number one spot for NBA, MLB, MMA, boxing. It doesn't matter. Every single prop, every single play, every single point, it's all at Bet Online. When it comes to bets, when it comes to props, everything that you need is at your headquarters for sports betting. That's Bet Online. Head to the website right now, use your mobile device, sign up, get a 50, that's 50% welcome bonus. Don't forget to use the promo code B L E A V, that's Believe, to get yourself a 50% welcome bonus. Come on, there's no need to hesitate. Bet Online, where the game starts. All right, let's get down to business. An active lifestyle can cause hemorrhoids. That sucks. Lucky for you, they're south of the border. South of the border is a holistic approach to dealing with the affected area. Go to southoftheborder.com, use code AHOLE, A-H-O-L-E, get yourself 30% off. That's pretty rad. And this is not an area of your body you wanna put bad ingredients in. Make sure you turn to south of the border. Southoftheborder.com, code AHOLE. I hope you're ready to have your mind blown with the greatest health and fitness information on the planet. <laughs> yes, bitch! Boom! Rock and roll! Yeah! Mikey likes you. Oh, Fuck your face. Ah! Oh, I'm not supposed to swear for the first... 30, was it 30 seconds? 45 seconds? Minute now? Who knows? It's uh, The internet is a fickle place. Well, it's not even the internet. It's YouTube. Good old YouTube. You know, if YouTube doesn't like a good old face organ, then... Uh, <laughs> Who doesn't like a good old face? I gotta be honest. Uh, I would not be... A f I've never received sex in my face. Really? Provided it. No, I've never had a penis in my body. Not in any point. You've never had a, a vagina on your mouth? Yeah, sure. That's fucking your face. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. And that's why women and men... That it, Honestly, that's one of the main reasons why there will always be a, a, a feeling of vulnerability, I think, for females. And I'm being serious here. I think that, that play, it's an often overlooked aspect of... The division between men and women and also feminism and also this misunderstanding that guys have of how sometimes uh, insecure women can feel about their their own body. Because, A, and I'm sure, Giorgio, you could relate to this. I've had dudes make me feel completely helpless. Liter like, literally, you could do whatever you want to me right now physically and i can't do anything to stop you and because of that because of feeling that i'm very sympathetic to women a lot of times because of course not all women like that I mean, you know valentina shevchenko is probably very there's not a lot of times where she's uh completely helpless but for by and large most guys don't walk around a city or going to work. I was just at Radio Coffee here in Austin, Texas. I stopped to get Giorgio and I some coffee. And the girl was saying, there was a guy there who was kind of acting weird. And I said, do you want me to say something to him? I said, I'm not John Wick, but I, I can handle myself a little bit. Would you like me to? And she said, no, I think, uh, I think he's going to leave. Thank you, though. She's like, honestly, if you could be around here at 6 in the morning when we open, I would love that. I go, what do you mean? She said, oh, well, because we open at 7 or something. So we get here at 6 to prepare. And that time, it's really dark. And, and all us girls, we're, we've gotten followed into the place. Uh, I've had to wait in my car until someone else got here because, you know, I was creeped out by dudes that were waiting. In, and I was like, man, that's it's sad. That sucks. That sucks. And uh, most guys don't have that feeling of, Oh my gosh, in my everyday life, I feel so scared of what's around, right? But I think a big part of that, too, is the overarching recognition that guys fuck things. We have a cock, and we, we put it in stuff. And you insert it in, and you, like, go back and forth with it. Women receive it. And gay dudes get to flip, gay guys get to 
have a like a little coin flip, which is pretty sick. But women are always there's never a time when women fuck things. I believe the technical term is switch. It's a switch. Yeah, like uh, Nintendo's gonna sue you. Probably. I mean, <laughs> good luck, Nintendo versus the gays. <laughs> no, yeah, no, no, gay, gay guys tend to. You can you can let fanfare with gay dudes die down because eventually gay dudes will just get back to like where's hot dudes eventually gay dudes are men don't fuck with lesbians you're fucked i mean i know this is your podcast but we never talked about my love for lesbians through college and how much i was trying to change women and how poorly that went don't well there's nothing to talk about (laughs) it's fucking stupid that's like i'm gonna convert al-qaeda to Christianity. She was a, a very wonderful three-point shooter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love lesbians for uh, p- personal inter- uh, being friends, but that's a, that's a uh, dude. They're dude. the best bros. They are, but they're also the worst. You, like angry lesbians, the wrong thing to have against you. You are, you know, that, you, that, that could ruin your fucking life. Angry gay dudes, uh, like I said, it's not cool. But eventually, guys, uh, ang- angry gay dudes are angry dudes. And just like angry straight dudes, eventually, you get back to like, oh, yeah, but what about pussy? And you're like, oh, yeah, okay, so I, I forgot about this guy who said something that angered me. Uh, and angry gay dudes are the same thing. It's just with different tools. You just show them Drake's dick that leaked on the internet, and yeah. all of a sudden, your argument's over. Yeah, or like Zac Efron in the new movie with the... Oh, Iron, Iron Claw? Yeah. And they're like, whoa, whoa, look at how buff he is. And Bro, I'm not gay, but I want to touch that. He's pretty He's pretty jacked. He's pretty jacked. It's impressive. It's very impressive. So, I do think that there should be more recognition. That's all. That, like, the, 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 the mere idea of taking something that comes away from your body and injecting it in, you know what I'm saying? That, that automatically puts you in a position of power compared to, like, under all circumstances. You could be the most domineering woman. You could be the most powerful, smart, uh, in control person. And at some point, you have to, then you, you have to receive this. You know what I'm saying? Like in the gay guy world, like when you talk about, I was just making jokes at jujitsu the other day about how, like, if I go to jail, like I'm, I'm a bottom. Like, let's, let's not kid ourselves. I think you could save yourself. Show me what that mouth do. Not, I could save myself on earth in prison. No way. Because no, I, I think, you know, you're tatted. You know, you just, you just get in with some of, some of the friends who are also white and tatted and, you know, try to save your butthole. You... At a, as a collegiate wrestler, as a, a high-level athlete, you have been around tough guys. You haven't been around killers. I've been around gangsters. And it has nothing to do with, like, muscles. has nothing to do with how tough or actually good you can fight. These, when I'm in, in prison with people who truly don't give a fuck about anything, I'm not that guy. I'm not a, I give a fuck. Of course. I give, I give lots of fucks. Here's what you do. You give away your dessert for breakfast, <laughs> and you throw a couple Domino's games. Giorgio spent, you know, a month hanging out with some dudes in a pod. That's true. <laughs> so, That's you true. know, yeah. they're not killers. No. No, they were, you know, low-level meth dealers. Yeah, I'm talking about, uh, like, what I, I, that, opened, Max, that yeah. opened my eyes. That opened my eyes being around gang bang, like gangsters. Uh, the most compelling, one of the most compelling things I ever heard on radio uh, with all the stir and stuff, Opie and, Opie and Anthony, a great, great radio that I listened to, and Petey Green, old Petey Green. Um, Jim Rome had a, an NFL player, and I wish I could remember who it was, but this guy, this is 15 years ago. It's, it's all over the internet. You could go on YouTube and just put like Jim Rome gangbanger. It's very compelling because this this NFL player that he's interviewing, uh, Jim Rome, sports radio broadcasting legend, deservedly so, is talking to this athlete, and this athlete is talking about balling and his gangster lifestyle and his escalades and whatnot, and and he hangs up and immediately takes a phone call and he's like, I got this, Jim Rome, you know, like I got this call, I got this call from, a, he says he's a crip. <laughs> Yeah. And this this gangster calls in. And he's like, I just want, li- listen, Jim, I just wanted to say, 
uh, these guys talk about like their 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 straps and their Escalades. He's like, I will take it all from you. I will rip that gold chain off your neck. I will whip the shit out of you. I will put you at gunpoint and make you cry. Take it all. Like you think because you're in the league or you're good at sports. Like I'm a I'm a gangster. You guys, all you rappers, you athletes, you go balling in the club. He's like, that's fun. You're wearing a costume. Me and my boys will will make you will take your shit because we don't care, and it, it's 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 so fascinating because I li- I grew up listening to NWA and then get into the '90s with like the explosion of gangster rap. I think it's cool and all that. Then I got really desperate with my drug addiction and I started hanging out with gangsters, real gangsters. That's how it happens. And I was like, oh, this is not a joke. This is not a joke, and this is not a fun costume. And one of the things that was so fascinating to me is twice. One time, this cholo from Lenny, this guy was no fucking joke. And I was sitting there, and I was smoking rocks, and he was cutting lines, and he was sitting there just like couch, just like this. He was sitting next to me, and he's like, uh, you don't know how good you have it. I said, What? He said, "You like, you don't want this. If you could choose not to have this, you should." He didn't say it in these exact words, but the, I'm, you know, twenty this twenty three years ago, something like that. Um, God, almost twenty five years ago, I guess, late nineties, yeah. So and and but so I'm I'm paraphrasing, but he he's like, I I don't. I don't want to be like this. Is my life. I had no father. I had no shit. And he starts going down like, and he talked about growing up with nothing and his life of, of his, his, a man. He said, you, you don't have, you didn't have any of that. You shouldn't do this. And I was like, whoa, wow. A guy I'm paying money for drugs for. He, he says this to me. And I was like, that, it really snapped my, it really pulled my head out of my ass. Now, he's like, I'll still take your money. Like, yeah, please pay, please no, pay no, me for he, these rocks. He was very open about that. Yeah. Another dude uh, was this guy. Uh, now I'm not gonna. I'm not even gonna describe him. But he was a fella who was a a a blood in a certain part of Los Angeles. And I used to, for a, a small time, buy drugs from him. And uh, I got, he had a really nice, it was a first generation Escalade. This is like probably in 99. And I got in his car. And uh, we were talking. And I paid my money. He gave me cocaine. And I was like already kind of keyed out of my mind. And I shook his hand. And, uh, He's like, don't, like, everything's fine. Yeah, but we weren't buddies by any stretch. I didn't have this weird uh, idea that we were. But um, I, I was just con- kind of conversing with him after we had made this thing. And when I shook his hand, and he put his hand out like this. He was, he was a bigger guy, and I, and I shook his hand. And everything was kind of casual, and he turned and he looked at me. He's like, don't ever squeeze my fucking hand that hard. And the way he looked, I was like, oh, shit. Like, not joke, and uh, he had a passenger in the passenger. I'm sitting in the back seat, right? He had a passenger in the passenger seat, and the guy just turned around, and he just looked at me. And they both looked at me, and I was like, fucking, whoa. And uh, my point being is, like, it's funny and cool to you guys, right, to, like, like, the idea of a gangster. I've been around gangsters, guys who carry guns, like, a part of their day, like a cop would, but they're not law enforcement who have murdered people who have spent long stretches of their life in in high security prison and i i i could i could become adcc champion and on top of that like a lumpini stadium champion be the best and i'm not that they will take my butt because i care i care i give many fucks I know a lot of people on there on the internet it's all talking about I don't give a fuck. I give many fucks. I give many fucks about a lot of things. I don't want to go to jail. I don't want to hurt people. I care. 
I get many fucks. There are many people who give no fuck. They kid and you edge lords, you cool dudes, you tough guys. Whatever. Yes, fine, neat. But there's people who have. They don't care. There's a scene in in uh, Casino. It's a great one where Joe Pesci's character is talking to his accountant. And he said, listen, give me my money now. And he said, "What do you, uh, we, you're in, involved in investing. He said, I don't give me money now. Because if you don't, I'm going to smash your fucking face in. And you can call the FBI and I'll go to jail. And I'll get out of jail and then I'll do it again. Because I don't give a fuck. And that's what people who have lost kind of that, that sense of hope for happiness and things like that. You can't... I can't comprehend that. I've been around it, but you can't comprehend it unless you've you 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 live that life. Uh, I was having a, a, a conversation at a dinner party, holiday dinner party, you know, three or four months ago, and um, this lady was saying like she grew up very poor on a farm, and that she is she doesn't know how she is going to try to instill the same values uh into her children because now she lives she's very relatively successful um successful enough that they they, they're they're not ill with want you know there's there's no you don't question whether or not you're gonna have dinner you don't question whether or not you have to do certain things in order to have food and and what's gonna happen next month so she's like yeah yeah I, i don't know how i'm gonna try to give and i said you're not you're not gonna just like my parents did my mom my dad grew up, uh, you know, he wasn't balling, but middle class. Uh, my mom grew up very poor, very poor. East LA Mexican, like tried and true, true, not very like genuinely questioning food and safety. Uh, and I will never, no matter how hard my mom tries, understand that because I didn't grow up. You could try and replicate it. You could, you could do these exercises. I don't get it. I don't get it. Just like I don't get not valuing my life and other people's lives, right? It's a long way to go for what I was talking about. But I was talking about penises versus vagina and receiving a sexual organ versus uh, giving one. <laughs> you know, because this, this is a weird thing. Like, I don't know. I guess I could talk to one of my gay friends. But even one of my, one of my gay friends, uh, I know one of my gay friends is big into receiving but another one of my gay buddies, he said they he just does oral. He's not even that interested in giving it in to his boyfriend's butt. He's like, yeah, we just we kind of like do dick sixty nine, and I was like, well, that's pretty sick. Frauding, I think is the definition of that. <laughs> Where did that come from? That's an interesting term. I don't know. I think it's when you rub them together and then use oh. like a hand over both, like scissoring, kind of, yeah. But we just did we just discover something we just discover that blowjobs are better than sex. No. Or at least better than anal. I think it I think it wildly depends. It also, I mean, there's nothing else in in my opinion with my understanding of sex and my experiences. There's nothing else that varies more than blowjobs. I would assume cunnilingus is the same for you ladies. Like, I assume there's experiences you've had with cunnilingus where it's great, and then it's probably miserable. Sex in a vagina and sex in a booty hole, it varies, but it's still, there's a pretty, the the margin is much more narrow. Because you still, like, you could still do your thing. Like, lying back there and like, oh, yep, she's going to blow me. That could go so far bad. To the point, like, you don't want it. I get insecure. When it's a new... In general, because I feel like I'm I'm, I'm not going to come fast enough. Yeah. Or, like, I might not appreciate it the way... And honestly, I'm just a little... Not bored, but I don't know what to do. Because like, I'm so used to, like, doing stuff. Yes. And you, I'm like... It's a passive... It's a passive activity. It is a passive And it's activity. hard for me to just like enjoy it sometimes. There's never a time. And I love beating off so much. You have no idea. There's never a time when I would turn down sex in comparison to just jerking off. There is 
absolutely blowjobs, I'd be like, I'll, I'd rather just jerk off. I mean, you can watch me. That's pretty hot. This did not happen to me. Thank you, Louis C.K. This did not happen to me. This happened to a very, very, very close friend of mine who gets a lot of... He, he's married now. For many, He was very successful with the ladies. So he has no business lying about his sexual conquest. And this isn't cool. So they, like, I know this is true. There's no, there's no reason for him to make this up. But he was kind of like interested in this girl and they were talking and it got he finally was alone with her for the first time and he removed his pants i will just say this girl was an immigrant let your let your imagination go wherever it wants with that she was not born in this country and she got down there with her mouth and she blew on his dick. <laughs> like. <sighs> and he said, what are you doing? And she said, a blowjob. And he said he couldn't. There was no sex. after. There was nothing sexual that happened after that. And she was a tr like hot. Because he couldn't. He said, he said the words to me. All I wanted to do was interview her after that. I didn't. <laughs> that is. Thank you for the applause. Because that is. You, you, that, you put that in like super. Like a Judd Apatow movie. And people would be like. Oh that's so silly. That happened to this dude. And the way he said. He's like. I didn't want to. All I wanted to do was interview her. I was like. Exactly. Now I know he's, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's exactly how that happened. Because that would be so mind-blowing to me. That even me, the last thing on my mind now would be sex. I'd be like, whoa, wow. There's this huge cultural chasm from where you grew up to where I grew up. And you have made you have, you have a certain level of awareness of the term blowjob. But you didn't actually know what that was. It got lost in translation, and so you started blowing on my penis. This is amazing. What country is this that has no concept of oral sex? No, no, no. I don't think. I don't think this was because this girl. She wasn't from a, a, a two hundred person country in the middle of you know French Guiana or something. She was from a, a relatively large Asian country. I don't think she, I think she was very familiar with oral sex. I think she heard the term blowjob and misconstrued. So she was like, these white men, they don't want me to touch it. They just want me to and blow on it. This was like late teens too. So it's reasonable that maybe she's probably never even had oral sex. What movie is that where they get the girl off with the flower? What? Yeah, there's some weird, bad movie from the 90s where like, like everyone withstands from sex and he just like blows a flower like on her. I don't remember what it was. I'm sorry, audience. <laughs> but if anyone wants to go look it up, it's like 40 something, 40 for 40 year old virgin. No, like it's not this 40 for states. No, neither. It's, it's, it's less famous than those. And I'm ruining your podcast at this moment. But if anyone wants, if anyone knows, please write in. Yes. All right. You want to switch gears real quick before I start to talk about all the amazing things I have going on in the health and fitness world. Here is the return. Of my triumphant, triumphant new segment, Ask a Boomer, where you, if you are someone who is under 30 years old, you can solicit a question to me at Mike Catherwood, at Mikey Likes You One. Get in touch with me, let me know, or just send a video question to me and you will be featured here if the question is good on Mikey Likes You on this segment, Ask a Boomer. <clears throat> yeah, intro song, motherfucker. <clears throat> Woo! Ask a Boomer. Ask a Boomer about some bullshit stuff. Uh-huh. That's right. Because I'm old and shit. I'm a Boomer and I know some stuff, some noble shit. Uh any question you want to me 
I will answer you as best I can because I'm old. Woo! Here we go. All right. Ask a Boomer question today comes from a young man. Again, from right here in the Lone Star State, the great state of Texas. Young man, he has a question for me. I don't know what it is. Here we go. Why, why, why are bobsleds called bobsleds? Why aren't they called Jeff sleds or Billy sleds or Ted sleds? I think bobsleds are called bobsleds because they bob back and forth. When they first started making them out of metal, I would imagine they started going fast. Because I don't think they're called Bob because a dude named Bob made them. I think it's because of like a bobbin, right? Like a, like because of the motion of bobbing back and forth, like bobbing and weaving. What do you think, Giorgio? Am I right? As the wonderful producer that I am, uh, because of the way the crews bobbed back and forth to increase their speed at the start. Baboom! Baboom, bitch! That's two in a row where I actually knew the answer. Last week, uh, Steamboat Willie, I just kind of knew. This one took a guess. But that's what you get when you're a boomer, you young whippersnappers. If you've been around a little bit, if you have some nobility, if you've walked the walk and talked the talk, you just kind of collect knowledge. I figured there's no way they would name him bobsledding because a guy's name was Bob, they would name it his. It would be like Smith Sleds because his last name was no, no. You know, there's no disease like Mark disease. It's always, it's always the it's always Huntington's disease or some shit like that. Lou you know? Gehrig's close, both names. By the way, yeah, he got he got both. <laughs> Lou Gehr Dennis Leary still had you know. Say what you want about good old Dennis, but that's a funny joke. You can't deny. Lou Gehrig died of Lou Gehrig's disease. How do you not see that coming? <laughs> By the way, that's up there. That's up there with the worst ways to go. ALS sucks. By the way, Lou Gehrig's disease is not called Lou Gehrig. It's ALS. Lou Gehrig, by far the most famous person to suffer from at, especially at that point, and then so he got it. I am today years old when I learned that. Thank I'm, you, Boomer. I think I'm right. You're right. I think I think it's ALS. Yeah. I mean, you could be wrong. We could be lying to everyone. No, 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 no. I'm gonna. I'm gonna th that's a little too serious for me to to, to just just guess. But A L S disease. A L S disease. Uh, um, M E R. Truff, trophic lateral sclerosis uh, signs treatment I guess I should have just googled Lou Gehrig's disease uh, also known as ALS or amyotrophic lateral sclerosis yeah so it is it is crazy rare fewer than 20,000 US cases per year that's so low but it's horrible. It, it, uh, watching uh, someone who suffers from that go is that's horrible. It's a it's a terrible terrible disease. Uh, so Lou Gehrig he he adopted the name, but like Huntington's disease, the only one I could think of that comes to mind is named after this dude Huntington, the same dude that they in my hometown of San Marino where they named the Huntington Library and uh, Huntington Drive and the beach. I don't know. Maybe someone else. Good question. No, it's a good question. I mean, that's a common enough name. But the guy who, who the billionaire tycoon who founded the Huntington Library in San Marino, California, that's the dude who died of Huntington's disease, became becoming. Hashimoto's is the doctor who dealt with Hashimoto's. The, the uh, uh, what is it called? Your thyroid disease. The thyroid syndrome. I don't know if it's a disease. A thyroid condition. Hashimoto's. It was the first doctor Hashimoto. So there you go. Hi, um, Bukaki. <laughs> um, Not a disease. <laughs> no, no. More of a uh, pastime. All right. So we knocked out Ask a Boomer. We talked about uh, wieners versus vaginas and gangsters. I don't know how I got on that topic, uh, but I want to talk today about 
overeating, okay? Overeating. I think that a lot of people, when they see someone who has achieved a certain level of physical fitness, physical performance, or a, a, a physical uh, appearance that is muscular or lean enough, that you start to detach them from reality. You start to assume that they are not human like you. I I need you to understand everyone regardless if they were just beginning their fitness journey uh, or they're someone who has been doing it for decades ha- no one's perfect everyone is human and everyone should love food because the people who take it too far in hopes of having a certain level of performance and so a hopes of having a certain type of physique can actually develop an eating disorder. An eating disorder that is no different or no less dangerous, I think, than people who are overweight, right? Jay Cutler, um, who, who has to be at least mentioned in the conversation of greatest bodybuilders ever. He said, I love bodybuilding. <clears throat> I'm paraphrasing. I can actually pull up that quote. I'll tell you the most disappointing part about what I did for a living. I don't enjoy food to this day. Mm. Like if you called me and said, Jay, there's this wonderful restaurant opening in Las Vegas. Like, you know, we see it all the time, right? And you say, what do you eat when you go out? And I don't want to have steak. Like I'm not a big steak eater at 48. That's crazy. The idea of eating seven times a day would rob you of the joy of eating. That's so meticulous. And now in retirement, Jay Cutler, I don't, he doesn't like, he said it himself. I actually don't like eating. I don't like food. We can go out to this great restaurant here in Vegas where he lives. And um, he's like, I did, there's nothing that excites me. I'm actually burdened by eating. That's gross. And he would be the first to admit that. That now, has to suck so bad. But Jay Cutler's a millionaire from bodybuilding, from, from doing that. So I guarantee that's the most disappointing aspect of becoming the greatest on earth at, for a certain time. But he'd do it all over again because that's what, that's what floats his boat. Right, just like rock climbing, mean, people who do extreme shit, rock climbers. I, I know, uh, I personally know a lot of professional fighters that they're like, I, the stress and the weight cutting, it's horrible. It ruins my life, but it's worth it because I. It's the only thing that makes me happy is fighting. Overeating and indulging myself to the point of feeling sick feels better than coming sometimes. Yeah, like 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 seeing the food on the plate. I then go back to times in which I couldn't eat, yeah. and I tell myself remember these times it actually happened a lot worse when i would go in the summers of not cutting weight to cutting weight again and i would look at the food on my plate i'm like you're gonna want that and think about that last cheese stick in six months that you did not eat (laughs) and that's i think Giorgio would be the first to admit this is that's disordered thinking that's not healthy thinking when it comes to food food is beautiful and it's sustenance and it's makes us go makes us grow makes us all of the cells in our body they need water and food so that we can have our nutrients to to grow the biggest thing they would tell us when i was younger and cutting a lot of weight is that it's food not fuel and they would use this term mouth pleasure (laughs) that you need to stay away from mouth pleasure you need to not think about the things that feel and taste good in your mouth because that's not fuel yeah i got some feelings about mouth pleasure and I took some I took some notes here and I and I have some things that I want to discuss when it comes because look none of us are per- I eat pizza and ice cream and sometimes I go overboard just like everybody does everyone goes out to dinner they're like oh this is too good I didn't you know this is a Super Bowl party and this seven layer dip you don't understand and you knew like you could add a couple chips with it on and it would have been fine but you're like I had five hundred. And it was fucking awesome, but now I'm 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 regretting it the next day, kind of indigestion, and also the just the shame and the guilt, right? Because you've been trying to eat well, and you went you went nuts with it. You went went out to to some you know arcade place with your kid. This is what happened to me the other day. I went to some like arcade type place, and I wasn't even going to eat any food. 
But she's like, oh, my God, did you see the ice cream bar that they had? I was like, no, I did not. She showed me. I was like, you want to get some? <laughs> Next thing you knew, I had like a 1,200-calorie treat out of nowhere. But I, I enjoyed it. And I tried to handle it the next day. Here's what I want to say. This episode, it could be titled very easily, don't. 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 If you overeat, if you if you go astray from your planned diet, if you happen to overeat, if you happen to eat something that you didn't want to eat or you happen to eat too much of something that you did, don't starve yourself for the next day to try to make up for it. Don't fight disorders with more disordered thinking. Don't starve yourself, okay? Uh, don't. Don't. Detox. It doesn't exist. Stop it. That's is all that's all I'll say with that one. Don't. Don't do a de don't detoxify yourself because you've added toxins. Don't don't train more. Punish yourself with more cardio to try to like kick yourself back on track. Recognize that you're not you're not off track. You're a fucking mammal that's eating food. Sometimes you eat the food that's there in front of you. Sometimes you you have it a little bit more. You just ate something. You're not off track. Don't kick yourself back on with like, I'm going to go run 85 miles in summer so that I can make up for that pizza. No, there's no making up. It just happened. Don't punish yourself with the proverbial flogging of cardiovascular activity. Okay? And most importantly, don't don't. I'm going to pull that clip from that movie, fake movie trailer. Don't. Don't. Give up. Last but not least, don't give up. You had been tracking your calories. You'd been taking your meals and your meal prep service or your Tupperware that you had perfectly measured in your macros and your calories. And then you went nuts and you went to this amazing breakfast burrito place. And you had two. And they were 900 calories a piece. And that's not unreasonable. That's a good estimate. And you're like, fuck. You feel so bad about that. That the shame spiral comes around and then you're like, you know what? Then fuck it. I'm going to stop and get donuts too. Because I'm done. I'm done with this. I messed up. I have erred. I have made a mistake. Therefore, I'm just going to quit. Don't. 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 Don't give up. Don't starve yourself to make up for it. Don't detox. <laughs> don't punish yourself with extra cardio. And don't give up. It's going to happen. We're all human. To err is to be human. Nobody's perfect. And in fact, perfection exists in all those errors. As you heard Jay Cutler say, to be quote unquote perfect, a guy who had gone decades doing it to get that physique, I don't like my biggest frustration with bodybuilding, Jay Cutler says. Is that I don't like food anymore. It's fucking crazy. And I'm not saying Jay's crazy. Because he did it. Because that's his livelihood. He did it to be the best at something. Don't make yourself hate food. It's not something. You're not at war with food. If you're just trying to get control of your eating. What you should be looking to do. Is to develop. Look at. Food, if you're going on a diet, if you're trying to change the way you look through dieting, which is something you should be doing, right? Because exercise is not a great means to change your physique. It's a nice adjunct. 
but everything about how you look in the mirror is going to be based around your diet okay so if you're changing your diet for the better in order to look better that is awesome and that is something you should do but you are not going to war with food you are going to sit at a table with it at at, like a un delegates meeting you are hoping to have a better relationship with food In order to change your diet for the better, you should increase your positive relationship with food, not the opposite. You're not going to war. Do not throw on your camo. Grab your grenades and your rifle and prepare. Because that's not going to get you anywhere. It's a long game. And you got to play it like a long game. And you got to learn how to have a better relationship with food. That's all. Now, along the way in this long game, there's going to be errors that you make. I'm telling you the other errors that you make in order to make up for said error make things a million times worse and never makes it better. I'm not much of a Buddhist, but one thing I did take away from my time reading about Zen Buddhism and everything is that the Buddha said the key to all human suffering is attachment. The source of all human suffering is attachment. And it is very true and apparent to me when it comes to people and their relationship with food, especially if they're trying to lose weight, lose body fat and things like that. You get so attached to either how you feel like you look right now and you'll never look better. You get so attached to that meal that you ate last night that you thought was bad, bad, bad or toxic or negative. You get so attached to what one dietitian or one Instagram guru told you about eating. You get so attached to that things that you can't break away. Detach from that shit and just say, I'm trying to have a better relationship with food. I'm trying, and I'm doing it. And even though I ate pizza last night and I washed it down with a pint of Haagen-Dazs, I am trying, and I screwed up. But my goal is that. And I'm not going to attach myself to that one bad meal. Because Lord knows, just like the comic who has a thousand people in the club laughing their ass off, but there's one person like ugh, rolling their eyes, every comic, regardless if they are an open mic or if they've been doing it for 40 years, will focus on the one person who doesn't find them funny and it fucking ruins them inside. It tears them up. You can... Go nine fucking weeks eating perfectly. Lose 45, 50 pounds. Have people telling you, you look great. Man, Sally, you look like a completely different person. It's amazing. When you come into work, I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe that's you, Sally. And then you have that fucking night of rosé and, 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 and hot fudge sundays and You didn't attach yourself at all to the 2,000 meals you had to change the way you look. That one fucking negative meal, you're like, ah, I'm so stupid. I'm so stupid. I can't believe I fucking did that. I can't believe it. It's just like that movie was so sad and I had to order more food. And then I started eating the ice cream. It was so delicious. And I'm such a fat fucking pig. We all do that. You attach yourself to all that negative shit, man. So detach. Don't. Start starving yourself to make up for the slip up. Don't detox. Don't punish yourself with extra cardio. And finally, and finally, last but certainly not least, don't give up. All right? Thank you, Giorgio. Thank you, everyone who listens. Thank you, especially to you, my patrons. And in this crazy mixed up world that makes you think that nobody cares, remember, I do. Be good.